so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Now, the first love, most people often will say, well, that's just soul winning. Soul winning is an application, but it's actually the least of the applications here, and I want to show that. Keeping your finger there, go to 1 John chapter 4. So the church in Ephesus lost their first love. Now, did they lose their soul winning love? Probably. Did they, so now we think about when you love soul winning, you love the lost. We go out, we preach to the lost, and we as Christians should be known by our love. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. So we ought to be known for our love for the lost. But what about our brotherly love? Listen, this also has an application. If you have love for the lost but no brotherly love in the church, well then there's a problem. You're out of balance. And it all begins with the love of Christ, with loving God. You're in 1 John chapter 4. Before, you, before we start there, I want to read this to you. In Romans 13, he says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. If I love you enough, I'm not going to break down your fence. I'm not going to steal your car. I'm not going to hurt you in any way if I am truly filled with the Holy Spirit and demonstrating the love of Christ. Right. Now, if you've lost your first love, then you're out of balance. There's no telling what you're going to do in the flesh. <laughs> Hebrews 6, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You know it's hard work to love each other sometimes? Yeah, sure. He calls it work. You need to get back to that work, that labor of love, of loving everybody like you ought to. He says, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. What's he calling the work, the labor of love, that first love? Ministering to the saints, helping your brothers and sisters out. That ought to be one of a big portion of our first love there. Hebrews 10, he says something similar. He says, let us consider one another unto uh, un consider one another to provoke one another unto love and good works. I'm to challenge you and provoke you unto good works and to love. I need to love you enough to challenge you, encourage you to be in church. So the first love that it's talking about, we're going to go right back there, but the first love is first to love God, then love the brethren, and then love the lost. If I said, I'm full of love, I go soul winning twice a week, you'd say, yeah, but you're being a jerk to me. Right? Yeah, but you're a jerk to your wife. Yeah, but you don't obey your boss. You're, you're mean to everybody else. You've got a mean spirit. So what about your soul winning? You're not obeying God. Therefore, you don't love Him. If you love Him, keep His commandments. And He said, love your brother. We're going to look at that, 1 John chapter 4. Look at this, 1 John chapter 4. If we had time, we'd go through the whole chapter. But the focus today is on 1 Corinthians 13. So let's look at verse number 19 here. 1 John 4, 19. We love Him. Because he first loved us. Who, who's your first love? The Lord Jesus Christ. I would venture to say, and listen, my wife, we've been sweeties. For, so I'm with Brother Eric. He's like, we, we've known each other since middle school. That's great. And that's your first love in the flesh. And you know, don't get me wrong, but your first real love is the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think we really understood how to love selflessly until we understood the selfless love of Christ. We understood what he's done for us. Man, I, that's just amazing that he did that for me. I love him. I love him back. It just comes, you know what I'm saying? So our first love really is the Lord Jesus Christ. We love him because he first loved us. Look at verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? There are people that are saved, but they're in bitterness toward their brethren. And because of their, their bitterness against other Christians, God takes it personal. He, God says, if you loved me, you would love your brother. Yeah. yeah, but you don't know my brother. Oh, no, he knows your brother. Right. He knows the lost. He understands what he's asking you to do. He's done more. He's set the example. He's given us a standard that we ought to try to attain to of loving each other. It's not easy. He has to command it. It doesn't come natural. He has to command us to love each other. And if we love God, we will obey Him and love each other. Look at verse 21. And this commandment have we from Him, that he who loved God love his brother also. <coughs> Second verse I've shown you where God's clearly commanding us to be full of love. Go back to Revelation chapter 2. And this commandment have we from Him, that he that loveth God, love his brother also. 
He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. God has commanded us that we need to love each other in the church. We need to love our brethren. We need to be known as His disciples by the amount of love that we have. Amen. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So God has a complaint about their brotherly love, and He takes it personal. He says, you don't love your brother? What, do you have a problem with me? you have a problem with my commandment? Think about God's perspective on this. He says, it's clear I've commanded you to love each other, but you're not doing it. You're disobeying me. Just as two children that are fighting. It doesn't matter why they're fighting. You told them to stop because you love them both. You told them to love each other because they're related. They're going to spend eternity with each other, right? And they disobey. Yeah, but dad, you don't understand. She did this. For, well, he did that. doesn't matter. I said, stop. Let there be peace. That's God's perspective. I mean, you just think about how children are. He wants us to be loving. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. He said, you don't love me or my commandment enough to obey me. You don't love your brother enough to obey them, which means they probably really don't love the lost either. And often people take that first love and try to just attribute it to soul winning, but you can't do that without going to the source of who wins the souls, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's commanded us to love our brethren. Look at verse number 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. You know, I've heard of fallen from grace, but here he's talking about fallen from love. He says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. He says, you need to obey my commandment. You need to love your brother. You need to love the lost and go preach the gospel to him. He says, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. So this is written to the church in Ephesus, and he says, I'm going to take your candlestick. That's the representation of God's Spirit, His blessing on the church. Could you imagine if God looked down at Law of Liberty and says, if you guys don't get this love thing right, I'm going to stop the church. I'm going to destroy the church. I'm just going to end it because you're bickering and fighting and devouring one another, and there's no love. No, Lord, will repent. That's the heart He wants. And He's saying, I'm going to destroy this church. Look at verse 6. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He's like, thank God you hate the false prophets and the, and the false doctrine, but what's wrong with your love? Your, your love is so out of balance and out of order that you don't even love the commandment of God to love your brother. Isn't that sad? And God threatened to destroy them. Hey man, good job, you caught the false prophet but you failed at showing the love of Christ to your brother. Not a disciple if you don't love your brother. And he's telling them, repent of not loving, and, and, you know, but keep hating the false doctrine, but it's not all about hate. Again, everything has to be in balance. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's a shame to only be known for hate. And I, I think there's even those that you could say it's a shame that they're only known for love and they don't <laughs> preach against sin. They don't preach that God hates certain things. God loves normal marriage. He hates the pedophiles of the world. That should be a no-brainer. God loves life. He hates abortion. You've got to preach it both. But listen, I don't preach about abortion every Sunday. In the Bible, in balance, it's over threefold more that he talks about love. So we need to speak about loving each other more than we need to do about hating them. 